All right, I have an idea for a tray. A little bit different. I'm gonna play with a whole bunch of whites, but also alcohol ink. So hang on. And I had an idea about working on a project. So the first part is I've got to do a dirty pour, but I'm going to play with white on white in the background. So I know that doesn't sound real exciting, but hopefully it'll turn out pretty good. So what I've got here is a couple different whites for effects, as well as things that appear to be white, like I've got... Um, Diamond dust mixed with a little bit of interference. So that'll definitely add some white sparkle to it. And then this, which I haven't used in a while, is, oh my gosh, forgot the name of it. Adriatic Blue by Lorez, which is a super pretty blue. So I gotta have a little color in there. And then this is some uh, white ink. Where's this white pearl? Sorry, white pearl. I'll put the uh, colors at the end of the video. So you will see what I use. And then this is a little bit of interference gold. Already the cup looks amazing. All right, a little bit more white. Seriously, really pretty. Okay, so let me get some uh, clear down here. I've got a little bit of clear left. Just got through coating several trays and have them ready to go in case somebody was interested. So all these trays and pieces of artwork that I do in my videos are for sale. The only thing that is the exception is the uh, all the little pieces I do for alcohol ink basics because they are just bits of scrap UPO paper and well there's just okay I'm putting this upside down <laughs> I think I need every last little drop out of that they're just little scraps of UPO paper that I'm just showing the technique on so it's not really a nice piece of artwork but all the other pieces they're available so don't be shy if you're interested just uh, give me a shout out I think that might do it. So what I thought I would do on this is have a dirty pour as my base and then let that cure and do some alcohol inks and like a negative uh, Piece. I'm trying to look at my finger to make sure I'm not too goopy before I swish this stuff around and mess up my tray. Oh, sorry, let me think back you out so you can see what the heck's going on. So all I'm doing is putting a skin coat on here just to have the resins glide, ac glide across the surface easily. rest of that. Put it back in my resin cup. All right, let me change out my gloves because I want clean gloves before I start working on my color. So white on white, whenever you do a tone on tone kind of deal, uh, let's say you play with all blues or all greens or whatever the color is. Monochromatic is the phrase in color theory or your color wheel thing. Um, what you do is you change up 
the colors are. I talk about textures a lot, and I think the textures comes from uh, my background in quilting and just playing with mixed media. If you have, say, like all shimmery, pearly colors, let's just say pearl type paints, and you had a variety of blues and pearl paints, to be honest with you, it would kind of it would get a little dull. So you need some things that are interesting for your eye to follow. So that's why I use uh, pearls and creams and some transparent colors to kind of jazz it up a bit. And this is gonna be really pretty. That right there is super nice. Oh, I'm having debates on adding blue just right now to it. Oh, heck with it. We'll work it out. Blue is, it seems really overpowering at first, but it's not. It's a nice, light, transparent color. I'll give a little feather, just a little bit. And then start tilting this around. Now, I do have some colors in here that might react to each other and create cells so they'll be very subtle cells because it's a tone of what well, is the stuff got fairly warm see how fast it's moving okay so it is summer in texas we're starting to get our 94 95 degree temperatures uh it was already 80 in my studio before i came out here and turned on the ac so is probably why it's so fluid so keep in mind that when your resin gets warm like this that things might set up that almost looks like clouds in there things might set up faster than you think so definitely get stuff out of the cups sooner let me torch this i think And I will hit this periodically with a torch, like in the next half hour. All right, let me bring you in for a close up. All right, this may seem like a whole mess of white, but when you get in here, let me zoom in. You can start seeing some different variations of texture, pick up little subtleties of gold in there, a little bit of the blue, then get some blue cells in there this is looking kind of interesting in this zone little sparkly bits all over so the plan is, is to have a nice slick surface and then do some alcohol ink on there but not a lot that it covers the entire piece so just enough to add some interest to it and then most definitely do a clear coat on top of that. All right, until tomorrow. All right, so this is all nice and cured and ready for the next step. What I thought I would do is get some masking fluid and create some shapes in here and then work with some alcohol ink on top of that and then remove the mas masking fluid later. So we're gonna get started on that right now and give that a try. Okay, 
So I've put my masking fluid in the little bottles that I use commonly for alcohol. It just seems to make it a little bit better, uh, meaning to apply the masking fluid. Uh, the other other applicator, I just I fight it. I get it gets stuck in the needle all the time, and of course I'm talking about this, and I can't get it to flow. Great. <laughs> Let's try the other one. I don't know if you need to. Yeah, that one's full. Okay, good. So I keep a um, a paper towel handy on the side, and I'll always test my needle out occasionally to make sure I'm getting a good line coming out. And that's just kind of one of those things, kind of like dealing with paint pens. You know, you almost need something on the side to, you know, test it out. So the idea basically, and let me talk you through this. I'll put my finger over the tip so I don't dry it out. Um, I'm going to create some shapes in here and what that's going to do is mask off that area and the alcohol ink won't go there. And that way I know for certain I'm going to have some of this resin showing through those holes. And what that's also going to allow me to do is, so I have, I have two things for certain. I'm going to have an alcohol ink layer and I'm going to have a resin layer of effects. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is when I apply my color, I'm also going to try and create some wispiness with the color. So it's not going to be a ton of color applied. It's going to be a very light piece. So it's also going to have some areas where it's showing through too. So we'll give it a go. If it doesn't work, it's alcohol ink. I can always remove it. So this is cured. It's been... 24 hours. I don't want to wait too much longer after that. And I didn't scuff it up because I'm going to do the alcohol link on it and then immediately turn and do a resin pour on top of this. So there are some areas in here which I definitely want to make sure they pop through because they're really, really super pretty. Like I've got a lot going on here. For example, there's a lot going on here and that would make great little peekaboo spots. So all I'm gonna do here is just create some shapes directly on there and you can build and make them bigger if you want. Uh, you see me do lines, swirls, you know, whatever you wanna do, <laughs> dragon shapes. So have fun, do what, you know, do what talks to you. And I've got this on turntable just to make it a little easier for me to, oh, so one bubble, I got three now. <laughs> oh well. So yeah, I got it on turntable just to make it easier for me to work with this and move it around. So I'm gonna vary the sizes a little bit. Work on that circle. And I'm also working early in the morning, so I got a lot of bright sunlight coming through. Hopefully that's not an issue. I moved my camera to a better spot, but whatever is in this area is going to cast a shadow. So, i sorry about that. Let's see if I can do a bigger one. If you apply a whole bunch, you can use your needle just to kind of redistribute. It's not like I'm pressing out any more of the uh, masking fluid. At that point, I'm just moving it around, getting a better shape, filling it in. faster you can move, the smoother your shape is usually. Even if it's not a perfect circle, you'll have nice clean curves. And a way to test this area is just literally go get a pen and draw some circles slowly and then draw some circles quickly and see how your hand will do your lines a lot smoother. And what I'm talking about is like getting all jarry 
versus a nice like smooth almost a mechanical curve if you want to call it really smooth without the jarring so it's really hard to do it slow but it's easier to do it quickly now, i'm not talking about perfection as far as like the perfect circle i'm just talking about like pretty curves So that's why I'm doing this at a smaller scale and then just progressively making it bigger. This is what happens if you screw it up when it's big. Well, there's only one way to fix that is make it bit, way bigger. And if you didn't want to go that big in the first place, next thing you know, you got a big piece. Got my kitty cat outside and she's sitting at the window just talking to me. You know, the old typical kitty cat thing is like, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me in, let me in, let me in. Okay. Sorry about that, hubby needed me for a second. I wanted to show you what I did with the remainder of the resin that I used from this pour because I had some really pretty colors and they're very subtle. But I had enough left over that I did this little, um, I guess, trinket tray or something like that. It's got a little bit of a space in there for, like, coins or jewelry and such. But let me zoom in. Chink. But it's got a lot of nice little subtleties to it. I love this area here where you can get a lot of depth in there. But that's just from doing a dirty pour into uh, this particular silicone knoll. But... You know, every so often it's just like, wow. I don't think I could have planned that any better if I tried. So I had to share that. So I get a lot of my um, silicone molds from Resin Queen. And she's on Etsy. Oh, I let it sit there. And it's already plugged up. Okay. Yeah, she's on Etsy. And I love her molds. And I've got a couple, like, trinket trays and, um, I don't know, little good at ganots kind of thing. You know, some little hearts and um, crystals and things like that. My little skulls that you've seen me do, that they came also from her as well. But I've had good luck with her molds, so I'm a repeat customer. All right. Try not to do it too evenly spaced, give it a little bit of randomness. Is that a little bit bigger? Let's see, I'm gonna do a couple really big ones if I can. Now these may or may not show up because they're on the very exterior perimeter. But they could. Let's see if I can get it bigger. Hear the tick 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 that's just me just moving the material around so i'm not adding too much all right i really like this zone here
Now I could do, um, I don't know what they call it, the circle technique or whatever, where you put objects down on, a whole, gate open. on a whole bunch of, sorry, somebody's at the front gate probably checking packages and stuff. But um, the circle technique, I could do that, but what it also allows me to, it, <clears throat> let me try this again, words. Come on, you could do it. Um, in order to do that technique, I have to put down a lot of alcohol ink, and I will not be able to get the wispiness that I want and the light that. So this is a way to do both. Another way to steady your hand is to have it rest on something. Even if you gotta put a finger down to draw, do it. You'll find your lines also improving as well. I'm using as well a lot today. That is the phrase of the day. I have definitely days too. All right, I'm going to do some freckles here and there. They'll probably show up a lot more in the middle zone than they will on the outer zone. But you never know with alcohol ink, sometimes they flow a lot more than you planned on. Well, let's not get those in a row. I could also sprinkle some alcohol drops on top of the alcohol ink and that would kind of create a similar effect. I might do that anyway. That way we have a couple different styles. All right, I got a lot, same kind of size, so I'm gonna make a big one. Of course, I just now knows I've got three in a row, one, two, three. So let's do a couple there. Oops, moving the <laughs> table. I'm gonna stop right and keep going for a little while. It's kind of fun. All right, where is my little cover? I put that on top of it? No. Okay. Great. Mm. Got a spray bottle on top. That'll do. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna use a dryer and dry this off real quick. I'm gonna pause for a little bit because that's not exciting. Okay, so this masking fluid is dry enough. 
Uh, you see how some of them are looking transparent, but some of them also have a very transparent uh, ring around it and a little bit of opaque inside. So if they're like that, that's fine. If it's too much like, like really bright white in the middle, when you touch it, it'll come up with you. And I was testing this one and you can see it came up, but it didn't come off right away and it still held its shape. So that's why it, it still survives. I haven't replaced it. So I continued to dry it enough that I can touch them on the surface with no problem. And that way I know they're ready for me to do my alcohol ink. Now I have a rag ready. Uh, I've already got some alcohol on this edge, but I've got it folded so it's a nice crisp edge. So if I get anything on the, um, on the wood, I can clean it off right away. So I'm gonna use some subtle colors here. Um, I'm playing with the blues, the blue tones. And so I've kind of got a uh, glacier and pool right now. So there's that, and I've got Laguna available. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit on the paper towel just to kind of look at the color to make sure that's what I want. So that's all it is, is I put a little drop on a paper towel just to kind of look at the colors. It's like, mm, is that what I want? Yeah, I think so. So I'm gonna put Laguna on the back burner. I've also got some gold here, or I'm sorry, brass, mixed up with a little bit of alcohol. So it's not gonna be super intense. It's, you know, it, it loosens it up a little, or creates kind of a wash out of it. That's probably the better way of describing it. And I've also got rainbow on hand. I'm definitely gonna add some more sparkle of a different nature to this. So I usually keep my alcohol links open when I'm gonna apply them right away. And then I'm just gonna do a healthy dose of alcohol in here. Well, this is gonna get tricky with a bright light. Cause you almost can't see it. All right. So a little bit here. And for me, that's a little bit. This is pool and pool is very light. All right, so I might do a little bit of Laguna. One over there, right? And then this is rainbow. Give it a good shake. It's one of those, when it goes on, it does not, once it dries, it doesn't move. All right, come on out. It's not one to pour out. It's got a clog in there, so it is sprinkling out. Oh well, I just hope I don't get it all over the floor. Meaning stress. Okay, let's try the other one. Maybe the other one will come out. Same kind of thing. Okay, good enough. All right. So I'm just going back and forth, lightly drying it off. I'm going to get some wispy lines in here like that, or very delicate lines. And that's okay, that's what I'm looking for.
trying to very carefully put the lid on my rainbow and it stuck to my glass and I ended up flipping the bottle of alcohol and it was like, thanks. So I'll add some little drops of alcohol and possibly some other colors to darken up areas, brighten up other areas as I go along. But I just want to get something down for right now. You notice I blow from a certain direction, pause, and then blow back, and it'll leave a little bit of a deposit. So right now, this is looking a little bit like a hot mess, and that's okay. I'm going to add some more color in here and uh, try to bring in something more. <laughs> Words aren't working, but that's okay. So a little bit of alcohol. A couple drops of color. And then we're going to start manipulating from here. initial part see how I get some lightness going out and that's why I want some light air colors around the outside edges or at least away from the middle right, let's do a little bit darker blue down here maybe this will be my primary Now you see where the masking fluid is going to come in handy for letting some of those um, glitter pockets come through. Alright, 
That was pool there that I added. I'm going to add a little bit more over here. I'm just adding basically extra color to play with. And you see how that's reactivated the color underneath? So that's going to be my next step in order to blend these colors together so they look like they're there for a reason. And so just doing color blobs. Yeah. At least that's what my brain's thinking. I'm going to do a little of this and a little of that. I've not added any gold, I realize. I guess it's not too light. This is going to solve two purposes. One, add a little color to add some of that gold in here on both sides. Tommy just did a big growl. <laughs> Might be lunchtime. Let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of blue right here for the glacier. Oop. Apparently, I'm going to do some more right there. <laughs> and then a little bit of gold, too. I'm just reactivating that blue there. If it's stubborn, rub your finger on it real quick. Bye bye, whoopsies. All right, let's see. Do I want to make any more? I got some of that one in there. All right. Yeah, I think I'm talking to myself more.
as hubby. He brought in some packages and I got something from ATD, my buddy Erica. Yay. All right. Yeah, we all get excited when our supplies show up, you know, or whatever hobby you're interested in, you know, those supplies for that. All right, so I got a little bit of fan out of color here, and I'm gonna try and do the same thing over here, and then the, then I have something I can work with, I think. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little of that and a little bit of this one. Okay. to do some finessing if I can with just alcohol and adding to it so I'm going to try and get these guys to interact a little bit more also bring out some softer lines too. All right, now these guys I'm not real happy with the edges, so we'll see what we can do with them. Here. Let's see what we do with this guy. Can you tell us the weekend? <laughs> Got a lot of family interaction going on. Probably not the last of it either. Let's see. So it's funny when you put it on the table and it's not done <laughs> with the fan part, you know, the blow dryer. So you see how this color here, I believe that's Laguna, is very much a, a greenish blue, whereas this is almost a straight blue here. And I wanted to have a patch here that had them both kind of interacting together. And that's primarily what I was messing with there. I'm 
just trying to do some, also some uh, wispies on the edges and blend them out a little bit. And I gotta work on this side. Sorry I'm twirling you so much. It's just fun to do with the turntable. Or Lazy Susan, I should say. a lot better. So all I'm doing here is reactivating alcohol ink by running the alcohol over it and then pushing it out, pushing it back in. So it gives little trails of light tones. Um, I'm gonna lighten up this little area just a little bit. And I break down the techniques I use in a series I've got on my uh, on my channel called uh, uh, was it Alcohol Ink Basics, and there's a whole playlist. So if you want, if you're ever wondering how to do alcohol inks, you can use them as lessons if you want, or just to like observe and try to create your own stuff by combining a couple different techniques. But it's probably it's primarily showing techniques, not necessarily project-based stuff. It's like you practice like brush strokes or working with the um, moving the alcohol or blending solution, that kind of thing. All right. Now I'm just figuring what is catching my attention that I don't like. I don't like this right here. I'm like, this is heavier than that zone. All right. Is there a formula for doing that properly? Not really. Is there a pattern? No, it's just a matter of personal taste, what your skill set is, how you improve your skill sets. Um, and what do you like color-wise, you know? Do you like bold colors, light colors, all colors? Um, you have a sophisticated palette, you like, you know, classical things? You know, are you out there going, I am going to make it strong and bold, you know? Whatever your taste is, you can incorporate it into alcohol inks.
pieces. You guys know I usually like doing things that are very bold. So when I do things that are subtle, it's more of a challenge for me. And I like push, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I find I do better if I challenge myself. That's how you grow, right? Kitty cat got put outside again. He's meowing. Alright, I think I like that better. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Okay, so... This next step, what I'm going to do, usually I do the peeling on camera, but I'm not going to do it this time. This video is already running a little long, and because it's a subtle thing, it's not such a big wow thing. Um, so I'm going to further dry this out, pull off these little bits of masking fluid, and then uh, the next step will be resining this piece off. All right, so I'll see you guys on the next video where I do a resin coat on this and maybe add a little bit more depth to it. All right, later. All right, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Later, y'all.